So the Oscars happen. We don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> but instead, we're going to talk about what other movies are coming out in 2021 on episode 99 of the podcast. Cue the music. Welcome, everyone, to the Entertainment Buffet Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Brandon Prosek. And I'm your other host, Jessica Quaz. Jess, we're back. We're ah, back. Episode 99. Oh, my God. So close to 100. Yeah, it's been a crazy month. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, we haven't been able to record an episode, guys. I have been super swamped because I have been moving. Um, so you know how that is with packing and then you get to the new place and you're like great i did it that's only one step though now i gotta unpack now i gotta organize you know <laughs> so there's not just boxes everywhere and uh yeah so it's been a time but i'm finally close to settle just need to set up like maybe some artwork and some you know because you see like the white walls if you're watching the video on youtube I just got white walls in my room right now but uh i appreciate the patients uh we're excited to do episode 99 and like we were saying just 100 it, it's next it's coming yeah it's coming like next episode i was gonna say next week but tbd on when it'll be released <laughs> but <laughs> next episode is gonna be one our 100th episode which is wild yeah jess what have you been up to in this this crazy month I have not moved, which is nice because moving <laughs> is a real hassle. <laughs> Literally, she's been in this chair this whole yeah, time I've been here this whole <laughs> since month. last episode. I hate moving that much that I'm now just <laughs> here uh, forever. Um, yeah, no, my month has not been as hectic as yours. Um, I'm just trying to piece my life back together post pandemic or during pandemic, however you want to phrase it. Um, almost fully vaccinated. Uh, you know, halfway to that, which is exciting. It seems like we're kind of rounding a corner. Um, so yeah, again, no move, nothing major. Uh, and have been also uh, pumping out episodes on my other podcast, Second Chance Movies. Um, doing that weekly, every Sunday, new episodes, baby. Yeah, check it out. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I almost forgot. Yeah. Now it's been, it's been a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm fully, fully vaccinated. Uh, Yay. got the, got the Pfizer juices in me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So far so good. Um, and my advice to anyone who gets it the day after you get the second shot, just plan to sleep, <laughs> like treat it like a really bad hangover, which like <laughs> I haven't had since like I don't know, 2014 or something. So I I just like straight up, like slept till noon, woke up, had some Gatorade and some Tylenol, slept another few hours, (laughs) just lots of sleeping and doing nothing. That day was useless. Yeah. Um, So plan accordingly. But um, yeah, before we jump into more stuff on the episode, uh, yeah, right before uh, last episode, we got ourselves a sponsor, a fancy podcasting sponsor. Look at us. Um, (laughs) Yeah, Zenny Optical, Z-E-N-N-I. Um, check them out. Uh, there will be a link in the podcast description. If you use that link, um, it'll kick back a little to the podcast, which we would really appreciate. Um, and the thing is, I've been buying Zenny Optical glasses since 2018. Uh, I have, I think, over 15 pairs. <laughs> uh, I don't have a problem. Um, <laughs> I just wanted one of every color. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it's options. So many different styles. This is uh, one of the pairs. Uh, Ooh. What love, yeah, what I love about this pair is it's got what they call like blue blockers. Cause like, so I work on the computer, work from home. So I'm staring at screens all day. Um, what's perfect about these is it doesn't hurt my eyes. So that's a lot of things that, you know, people don't realize if you've had glasses for a while is, if you don't have blue light blockers, it could mess you up if you're staring at a screen for eight, 10 hours a day. Um, so check out Zenny, check out that link. Um, you may have seen Hulu ads with Rashida Jones repping them. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I just love them. They're affordable. You can get 
pairs for like 40 50 dollars so instead of spending like 300 dollars, like what some people would spend on glasses so um yeah i can't say enough good things uh i mainly reached out to them to be a sponsor because i actually like their product i didn't just you know we didn't just get the sponsor and we're like yeah we're they're good because sponsor potential money you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I only reached out to Jess and I are only reaching out to brands that we actually like and can talk about genuinely uh, because don't want to lie to you guys. Um, No, or anyone. We don't want to lie to anyone. Not just our podcast audience. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So check out Zenny. Um, Any purchases you make with that link, or we could send you other discounts, reach out to us on social media. I'll send out some other discount codes. We fancy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but sponsor segment over. Moving on. Jess, this last month, what have you been watching? Ooh, so I've been watching a lot of really weird movies for my other podcasts. <laughs> um, so Second Chance Movies, my uh, podcast host, Joe Harper, and I rewatch movies and decide if they deserve a second chance, if they hold up, if they've actually gotten worse over time, um, if we were wrong about them the first time around and they're actually really good. Um, So we do just all sorts of movies. If you guys wanna go check that out, if you have any suggestions on movies we should talk about, please let us know. Um, But some of those movies include, (laughs) here we go, the Godzilla with Matthew Broderick from the 90s, Anaconda, Lake Placid, Troy, do you remember Troy with Eric Bannon and Brad Pitt? I remember it was a thing, did not see it. Okay, well, <laughs> Eric Bannon is wonderful. I'm just gonna say that, like in general. What has I, he been up to? I know, I like him so much. Well, he was in the Dirty John show and he was really good in that. And then, yeah, where you been? I like him a lot. <laughs> yeah, where you been? <laughs> where you been? Um, Are, just... Do you still have stank on you from the Ang Lee Hulk? Like what happened? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Poor Eric. Uh, we've, I've also watched Sin City, Double Jeopardy, Armageddon, Deep Impact, Piranha 3D, Jurassic Park 3, uh, Ninja Turtles, the Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. So some really, really uh, just all across the board movies. Uh, I don't. Was I it have... your first time viewing that Ninja Turtles? It was. <laughs> Okay. It was. <laughs> I will just say, if you're Entertainment Buffet fan, I used to do reviews back in the day. Uh, one that got a lot of attention uh, on the So I Saw show was when I totally hated on that Ninja Turtles movie. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> and had one of my first like angry commenters when someone, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was either a YouTube comment and or a tweet uh, where they said, uh, you could take this review and shove it up your fat ass. Whoa! Because um, they were so like, you, you know, defendant of that movie. And I'm like, watch it again. Yeah, and, let me tell uh, you. I just <laughs> did. It's not worth fighting someone on the internet for. It's right? really not good. <laughs> right? And so, yeah, check wow. out. Uh, <laughs> uh, if, if you are interested, I will say the second one of those movies is better. I've heard that. I haven't want, we haven't done that one yet. Uh, maybe we will, but um, yeah, I, I heard it. I may be interested in joining you for something like that because okay. that was a weird situation where it felt like a studio and or director, whoever actually listened to the complaints of the first one. Mm. Uh, bear in mind, was not perfect. Didn't go to like from like D to A or anything, but like it, it it's like, everyone was like, you know what? The first one didn't have enough turtles and too much Megan Fox and like this, this, yeah. this. And so they're like, okay, we'll give you more turtles. Uh, they'll okay. be funnier and you, you know, we'll get weirder, you, you know? And like, they, it, it's like people complained about five things and, they'll, and they actually took the notes, which is something that Hollywood a lot of times refuses to do. So yeah, um, uh, yeah I'd be interested to see your thoughts on that one because all, probably all you, if you were to write down your complaints if we were to listen to that episode of your podcast and like 
all your complaints. I want to see how many they actually listen to for the next one. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And I, I'm curious to see if my current complaints after watching it just a little bit ago is the same as from yours when it came out in 2014. I'm sure it is because it has yeah, not, I'm sure you... it has not aged well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put my YouTube link from 2014 in the show notes. Oh my goodness. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then you guys can go to my eventually when it comes out and see my thoughts too on the, the Michael Bay and Ninja Turtles. It's the most like Michael Bay. It's produced by Michael Bay, but it's like essentially it's a Michael Bay Ninja Turtles. <laughs> it's yeah, it's got his weird. fingerprints on it. It's so strange. Um, um, so yeah, I haven't been watching a lot of movies just for the fun of watching movies. Um, the only movie uh, since we last recorded that I watched just for to watch a movie uh, was Nomadland. I saw that since we last talked and uh, I, I just think it's beautiful. I think it's just such a gorgeous film. Um, the way it's shot, the way it's acted, uh, the pieces in it, gorgeous. So, I mean, it deserved best picture for sure. Uh, the Oscars didn't deserve it, in my opinion. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I have been watching a decent amount here and there. Um, so as far as on the TV show side of things, I have been watching the Amazon Prime original Invincible which cannot recommend enough. Um, this is based off a comic book series that was made by Robert Kirkman. If you're wondering who that is, he's the one who made Walking Dead. Um, so it's what's cool about it is the animation is just like a 90s cartoon, but then there's a twist where you're like, oh, this is not what I thought it would be. And so it's a lot of fun. Uh, Invincible, uh, I did just finish Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, thought it was good, it was fine. Nothing, uh, you know, not my favorite thing in the world, but I'm glad it got to be a mini series opposed to if they tried to shove all that into a movie. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I watched <laughs> some oldies. Uh, I watched the original documentary, Catfish. Um, I watched that uh, not too long ago, too. I had seen it before and I rewatched it and it's still just a very captivating story after all yeah, these years. I had only seen the TV show. Okay. And so I was like, why is it called catfish? Like, why was that the term that we started using? And then at the very end where the uh, possibly, you know, really not smartest guy in the world <laughs> goes on this monologue about catfish and then like the movie ends i was like that's where it came from yeah it's really he strange. told this random story <laughs> yeah. yeah like and now we've been using it for fucking like 10 15 years now yep. uh like 10 seasons later of that mtv show um yeah so i watched that original doc uh i watched i'll just name off a few others i watched the original get shorty movie Oh. Had a lot of fun with that with John Travolta, Gene Hackman, Danny DeVito, Reno Russo. Like, wow, very 90s cast. Uh, I saw Dazed and Confused for the first time. Oh my goodness, you've never seen that before? No, I've I've heard like the classic Matthew McConaughey lines and whatnot, but like a lot of things about spanking and a good portion of that movie. Yep. Uh, it's, some of <laughs> yep. that is just... I don't know. It didn't do it for me. Okay. Uh, if it's if it's other people, if that's your thing, as far as like you find it funny, but like maybe it just got built up as this classic. And when I saw it, I'm like, what is happening? I see. Um, I saw that movie for the first time as a teenager, and for so so I think you need to. Like it's one of those movies that if you see I'm as too a old. teen, I'm yeah, you might be like too old. Because I feel like if I watched it for the first time now, I'd be like, what the fuck is this? This is strange. I don't like this. Um. So maybe it's that's why. Such a crazy <laughs> cast to see yeah. them so young. So young. Um, yeah. I also saw Julie and Julia. Um, oh, that's a sweet one. Yeah. One of like the bajillion Meryl Streep nominated movies. Yep. Um, saw Indian in the Cupboard for the first time since I was a kid and seeing it on VHS. The title is troubling. Um, <laughs> did not know it was based on a book series and they wanted it to be a franchise, but it bombed. Did not finish the franchise. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that either. <laughs> I read the wikis about the books and apparently it's like more about time travel than like the toy thing and it just gets wild. But uh, yeah, and then also watched Cowboys and Aliens uh, that can't believe that came out 
freaking 10 years ago. John Favreau's wow. follow up to Iron Man 2 with Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford and Olivia Wilde and Sam Rockwell. And just, I was like, what is with this cast? What, I'm like, what is with this stacked cast? And then I kept wondering, because I hadn't seen it before, I was like, why did everyone shit on this movie what what happened so i went into it just like objectively and i made a mistake i rented the extended edition which is like 20 extra minutes and boy did it feel extended uh <laughs> i like at the end of the movie my first note was like could have shaved off 20 minutes <laughs> but yeah it was just a movie that i think they could have should have focused on being more fun opposed to just being weird. Um, right. With a title like that, you got to just be fun with that. Yeah, right. Just it's like on. they could have had like another Men in Black on their hands, but as a Western and they just try to be too like serious with it. But, right. Yeah. So like that's things I've been watching, but we did have a little homework for ourselves because we both had watched crazy documentaries about 90s pop stars. Uh, so I had recommended to Jess to watch Boy Band Con. Uh, that's a YouTube original produced by Lance Bass about Lou Pearlman. Um, and then Jess, uh, what was the name? You gave me the Britney Spears one. Yes, yeah, so I assigned Brandon to watch Framing Britney Spears. Uh, because they were both documentaries, like we said, if you'd listened to our uh, what, full what we'd been watching, we both talked about it. And so we decided to swap them. Um, so I watched The Boy Band Con and he watched Framing Britney Spears. And I don't know about you, Brandon, but watching them like so close together, because I've watched them both pretty close together. Same. It was like a revelation of being just just understanding that like wow you don't always know the full story with people you know yeah it's, it's i think wild. It's, it's especially weird for our generation because mm -hmm. we were kids when they were big and yes. so we didn't know and also like this is gonna make it sound like we're saying how how like old we are but like the internet wasn't like readily available to everyone mm -hmm. and it wasn't until like probably like we were in like middle school, high school to where it was like, you know, not having just the uh, <laughs> the hook up to the wall uh, on yeah. the phone with the whole dial up. Mm -hmm. So um, we didn't know a lot of these behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. Like sure, we'd probably see on TV like tabloid stuff or like MTV stuff, but like, I didn't really follow that when I was younger. Um, I just listened to the albums on my boom box with a CD. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But the tabloid culture was not giving a story. I mean, it, I want to say full story, but it was like their own story. Like, so right? it's, it's wild because like you said, like we were so young and these people like Britney Spears and NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, all, you know, that whole group of pop stars were like otherworldly. Like they were like gods almost like they were just yeah. these big figures that like you didn't realize, especially as a kid, when you still like aren't understanding certain concepts, like they're human beings. And like, it was just so much behind the scenes that like you mm. just never knew. So yeah, it was just this very eye-opening thing. Cause when I was younger, I looked up to Britney Spears specifically so much and I love her. I still love her. Um, but I didn't like, I didn't really realize just how bad things were for her because yeah. she was also portrayed as this like smiley, bubbly, like I love to sing and I have cool outfits. Like she just seemed like this, just like happy gal from the South. And you realize like, that's what her persona was. And then there was this other end where people were viciously attacking her. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, oh my God, like that's, it's insane. You don't, you just don't, you never know what someone's going through, anyone, even if yeah. they are a celebrity or a millionaire or they they seem successful. Like you just never know the full story that someone's going to. And that was a really big lesson I learned in watching both of these because both, documentaries have such insane stories that these megastars went through yeah so like I, i'll say a little on my experience watching framing britney spears um there's certain documentaries when i watch them you know i was watching it with uh my girlfriend and where i need to pause and process mm -hmm. you know, i can't just keep going because like when i find out certain things like 
just the fact that, and, and like this could be found on Hulu, by the way, if, if anyone didn't like hear it when it first came out and was everyone was talking about it. But um, uh, so this whole controversy with the conservatorship and the fact that, cause like, I remember like not long ago, I'm like, wasn't she like in Vegas for years, just doing shows all the time. And then like they said like, yeah, she was doing this much and she was making this much. And it's just like, I'm sorry, but if a thing that was originally invented for older or like maybe mentally challenged people, people who aren't able to like actually handle their finances or like like some of the experts kind of said in the documentary, like a conservatorship is usually set up for like, um, and like I had to watch out for this. I used to be in banking. Like when you're worried that an old person could be like fooled out of their money. Because like people would come in and they'd have like a story of like a fishing story of like, oh, I uh, got this email that so-and-so uh, needs this money and I need to wire the money because they're in jail in Africa, you know, or whatever. And it's like, ma'am, like the, that's, this is all fake. Uh, do you know anyone in Africa? No, like that's what it's set up for. And the fact that someone who is touring and doing a show in Vegas on a regular basis, not like a, oh, once a year pop in surprise show, like a consistent where thing where millions of dollars are happening. And also just the fact that the conservatorship is with a man who doesn't seem like he should be in charge of it. And it's, it's one thing if like, Oh, it's weird that the conservatorship exists for her at all, but of all people to have it, it's this guy who seems very like, like, didn't he like start some businesses that fell through? Yeah. He's not like he's does. It's not like he but, has this history of being a good, smart financial success. Like the right? exact opposite. And she's outright saying like, <laughs> I don't want this. And so it's God, it was, it was a wild journey. And I, I really hope that it brings a lot of things to light and that, you know, hopefully we'll see it uh, a change. I mean, the fact that the person is like, look, I would rather give responsibility to like a bank yeah you know? <laughs> strangers than my own father like that's yeah. your child dude come on and that's and that's one thing too about the conservatorship it's not that she's saying i don't want one in general she was like specifically asking can it not be him yeah i think that like the judge would be like yeah let's find someone else like that's you know uh you're someone who clearly can handle things but and it's also she's a mother and mm -hmm. uh it came out uh, I'll never, uh, I think we talked, we may have talked about this in last episode, so, but like the clip of Craig Ferguson being one of the only late night uh, hosts when like everyone else was doing all these jokes, just bashing Britney, bashing, you know, Anna Nicole Smith or like any of these other celebrities, especially women, especially young women, um, pop stars, uh, like these old white men are just like bashing these women. And then Craig Ferguson just says like, she's a baby. And like, also like, she has children. She's a mother. Like, I'm not gonna, he's like, and, and it was crazy. Cause this was like, what, 2006 or something? Like mm -hmm. long before woke culture was even yeah. thing. Yeah. And he's like, we should be criticizing politicians and like people like Donald Trump. And mm -hmm. <laughs> little did he know what would happen 10 years later. Right. Um, but uh, I was like, wow, lots of respect for Craig Ferguson. Um, if I were to watch the late night show now, I want to like go back and watch episodes of his because as someone who's been a comedian, uh, I, I I just don't know if I would be able to lead a show where writers come up with jokes to bash women like that. And I'd be like, yeah, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Like, no, that's wrong. Like right. Well, the thing <laughs> is though, back then, like it was fine. Like that was the norm. And that's what I think the biggest takeaway for me from that documentary is, you know, there's the, to me, there's two sides. There's the whole thing with the conservatorship. And then there's the whole, like what she went through and the way she was vilified for just existing. It's mm -hmm. insane. Um, and in, I think we've come a long way in how we talk about young women and how we talk about mental illness. I think we still have a long way to go, but seeing it from that, it's like, okay, we have made strides because clearly these, these meltdowns, these cry for helps, like there's something there. They're not just being 
divas you know yeah. like you even like look at paris hilton she was getting all sorts of things too and then you find find out recently she was a a child sexual abuse victim like she was in a she was an abuse victim of this horrendous boarding school so it's like again there's there's human beings behind these these yeah. issues it's just heartbreaking that's, it's why i personally have never been much to follow like tabloids or like gossip or like celebrity culture uh it just never interested me but then like seeing something like this I just want to go up to the people that do this and say like, look, if you go up to say a dog uh, or a cat or a mouse or whatever, and you literally go like, you're going to do something weird, going to do something weird, going to do something weird. You crazy. You, uh, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, flash, 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 light, 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 light. Well, what are you doing? And then eventually the animal is going to freak out and you're going to be like, oh, fucking weirdo. Right. What a vicious fucking animal. Weirdo. Why'd you freak out? Well, what a animals having a meltdown. Yeah, oh, meltdown. It's up. just like you prodded them. And then when they did what mm -hmm. you wanted, you criticized it. I was like, this is disgusting disgusting and like when the one photographer was trying to justify it like well at this point i was concerned it's just like if you're concerned yeah. put the camera down yeah uh exactly. like don't act you can't like 2020 hindsight you know no pun intended uh 2020 like whenever the doc came out but like you can't like look back at it and say like well i was concerned it's like we see the footage you don't right. seem concerned like right. anyway uh, I get. <laughs> we I know there's so much on just these two documentaries. <sighs> Truly, that's all I'm gonna say on the Britney documentary. It's very good, very fascinating. Um, not what you probably expect. Uh, Jess, I want to hear your thoughts on Boy Band Con. Sure. So the it's it's weird to say that this documentary felt lighter than framing Britney Spears because it's still a horrendous story, but there's uh less you know big picture implications uh with it so uh, as we talked about in the last episode where we talked about this uh boy band con is about lou perlman uh this just sleaze ball of a human being who essentially um assembled boy bands that we know today so yeah. backstreet boys uh in sync like lfo was in there there was i mean just a few different other ones that can't come to my mind right now but like i think a team was one as well like bands that were the radio airwaves of the 90s big top of their game bands and the whole story is just breaking apart this guy and his history and how in his lifetime he conned and destroyed so many people uh he was running scams that basically funded the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and then meanwhile was running scams on them essentially and yeah. manipulating these literal children because yeah. they were children. They were like high schoolers. They were high school children. I think the oldest one was maybe like 19, 20, like yeah. young, young, young children and was, was taking money from them too. And it's just crazy the lengths this one person went through to just try to be at what he would consider the top it's it's insane and i i gotta say like i love a con i love i love con documentaries uh, i just watched the we work con documentary i mean i could watch con documentaries for hours i find cons fascinating this guy was on a whole other level where like literally every part of his life was a con and it's just, just a sociopath trash yeah. bag with a heartbeat truly uh, just despicable human being who screwed over anyone it was like anyone was a game and i don't want to get specific about the cons because i think uh it would give too much away i think if so many people especially millennials children of the 90s need to watch this because what's so fascinating is that this one scumbag like defined that era of music that's what's so yeah. wild and it yeah. wasn't like he even cared about music it's just like no, oh i can make was, money off this it was a way to make money and then mm -hmm. use that money to try to spin it into bigger cons to make more money um yeah i won't go specific into cons either uh i've seen this documentary twice i loved it just to to clarify, it is available on YouTube for free. Mm -hmm. um, not you don't need like a YouTube premium TV subscription. Like just type in Boy Band Con. Um, 
the Lou Pearlman story and you'll, you'll see a thumbnail with Lance Bass and yeah, it's phenomenal. Um, I also want to say that not only is the story wild, but it is produced and told so well, like the whole, it's a, just a high quality documentary as well. And I was watching it just feeling so proud of Lance Bass too, like just <laughs> taking ownership of this horrendous thing and, and telling it, it was in the way he told it and kind of almost got this like secondhand justice for all these people that were screwed over. Like it was just, wow, just it, wow. Like, and that's another thing with that too. Like I said before, like you never know like what someone's going through. A lot of people I feel like have looked at uh, members of these boy bands or boy groups or, or girl groups and thought like, wow, they were really like washed up. Like they never did anything after that. And it's like, you hear stories like this and it's like, yeah, no wonder. Like if I went through that at that age, I would never want to work ever again. Like how do you trust people? Like, oh my God. So yeah, yeah. Both, both documentaries, I think, um, even if you're not necessarily fans of either of these, these entities, like that's fine. Just to understand like the cult of celebrity and entertainment business. I think, I think everyone should watch both these documentaries, truly. Yeah, I, I think they're not just fascinating for people of our age who maybe grew up with pop stars. I think objectively they are fascinating. Uh, for example, Boy Band Con, like you said, it, it is about a con, it's about uh, one of the largest Ponzi schemes in US history, not for this category of the Ponzi scheme, like Ponzi schemes in general, of those that have happened and been caught and like whatnot, this is one of the biggest in history. Mm -hmm. So um, on top of the cons that he was doing with the boy bands. Um, so it's, if you're a fan of crime documentaries, it's fascinating. Um, and then with the Britney one, it's just, it's a harsh look at what our country uh, finds interesting and how instead of looking at a tabloid that's like so-and-so gained 20 pounds, it's like, maybe you should look at another celebrity that did this nice thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, like, I, I remember even just seeing like, an article about like someone who was like buying shipping containers and like converting them to like affordable housing for homeless people or, or like something like that, where it's just like, why isn't this in the news? Why is mm -hmm. it about, you, you, you know, murder and so-and-so it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and like, instead of directing that weird animosity towards like, you know, Paris Hilton, who has no power, you can like just ignore them and focus on like politicians that have a right? lot of power. Like just, yeah, just watching it's very, very eye-opening. Very eye-opening indeed. Um, so yeah, we are going to now move on to the main topic of the podcast, which is we are currently recording this at the end of April, 2021. We still have a good part uh, portion of the year left. Um, things are kind of opening up, you know, uh, with the pandemic. Um, I, I, I'm still deciding when I'm going to feel comfortable going to theaters and such. I know everyone, it's kind of uh, on that basis on what some of these movies, if they'll come out in theaters, if they'll come out in streaming, bit of both. Um, so we wanted to just kind of bring up some movies that are scheduled as of today to come out, but like things that have happened the last year and a half is we don't know if this could change tomorrow. So don't take us for our word for it that like you said so-and-so was coming out. It's like, look, uh, the internet told me that. Yeah. I told you that. <laughs> they might um, not even know when they're coming out. If right. anyone has been following Black Widow, <laughs> I guess it's still coming out. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, did New Mutants come out yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> I know, but like that was a movie that we're just like, what happened to it? I know, yeah. and you can't even blame that one on the pandemic. That was like coming out <laughs> for just five years. Shenanigans. <laughs> oh um, my goodness. Yeah. So Jess, kick us off. What a uh, what's a movie or some movies that you're looking forward to that are coming out or scheduled to come out in 2021? Yeah. So we'll see if these movies come out when they say they're going to. And like Brandon said, like. I personally am not ready to go to, into a movie theater, but hey, if, if these are available to watch at home, definitely will. I may even spend some money on some of these. We'll see. Um, so the one that's coming out the soonest that I've been excited for for a while, 
uh, is Spiral from the Book of Saw. Um, oh. Yes. So this comes out May 14th. So if all goes according to plan, just a couple weeks. Um, this is, uh, you guys might remember it from like pre-pandemic because there was some talk about it then. It was supposed to come out in 2020, uh, like probably all these movies were. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but this one is fascinates me because it is uh, interesting. It's, it's sort of like a reboot of Saw from what I understand. The details of how it fully relates to Saw is still a little under wraps. So we probably won't know that till the movie comes out. Uh, but essentially it is a retelling of sorts of Saw. Um, the synopsis is a criminal mastermind unleashes a twisted form of justice in Spiral, the terrifying new chapter from the book of Saw. So I don't know what the book of Saw is. That's not a thing. I have seen every single Saw movie um and there was never a book of saw but what makes this interesting is if you watch the trailer the vibe looks so different from like the last six saw movies um it looks way more grounded in reality it follows uh it doesn't look like torture porn is that it does not look like torture porn <laughs> um because i'll admit I, i've not seen a single saw movie you haven't even seen the first one no i, oh. I like that's the only one maybe but i yeah just, i don't know i'm that's uh... no the first one is not like a there's gore but it's not like torture porny and it's it was incredibly indie too uh the budget was extremely low which is what something i always find fascinating about saw in general is that the first movie it was like made for nothing yeah. um and then it just became this snowball of like a shit ton of money into a franchise so i would say you know if you're not like super into horror the first one is definitely worth watching it's it's still really good um this version this spiral uh seems like it's going to be more in line with the first saw movie uh because at some point saw it just goes out of control uh the first three are honestly really great and then after that it's just like why why did i watch four more of these i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know but i did here we are um what's interesting about spiral is that like i said feels more grounded in reality and follows a cop uh as he seems to be discovering sorts of twisted stuff and uh what is this where does this all go what does this mean i don't know not much is super known about the specific plot for this movie it stars chris rack in a serious role it was also produced by him too which i find really fascinating was he was the one that sort of got this particular movie going uh -huh. um so i'm very curious he must have also seen all of the saw movies <laughs> um and it also stars samuel jackson which i'm like hell yeah let's get look, okay i'm here um and yeah i was looking forward to this now the franchise year. for me to be in motherfucker I'm like yeah good for him <laughs> like all right i'll take a horror franchise with him in it why not like hell yeah um so i'm excited motherfucking saws. <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm excited i don't know what to fully expect with this movie I do worry that a lot of people are going to forget about it and it's going to go super under the radar and then they'll never try to do something like this again. Because I think like putting the ideas from Saw into a more grounded form of a movie could be really cool. So we'll see what happens with that. I hope people don't forget because uh, I think it could be really awesome. So I'm I'm going to see it. I'll probably spend money on it because like I'm that excited for it. And the director, Darren Lynn Bowsman, did direct the second and third Saw. And he also, like for my really obscure horror fans, directed Reap of the Genetic Opera, which is a dope movie. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I think it could be really cool. Well, from what I'm seeing about the movie, and I've yet to see the trailer yet, but I was interested, um, is good thing uh is budget was only 20 million so they that's a relatively cheap budget for hollywood so if it it, it really just has to do decently mm -hmm. and then if it's good then they'll probably do another one so yeah um, it seems like they're going more the blumhouse route which is to give a movie still good actors and everything and a good story but like a low budget so if it doesn't do well it's like well it wasn't a big gamble yeah um 
Nice. Uh, so I, something that's coming out only a couple weeks later that I almost forgot was coming out because, you know, we've been busy with uh, pandemic um, is A Quiet Place Part Two. Oh yeah, I've completely forgotten about that. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, this is scheduled to come out uh, end, of May, uh, end of May and it's uh, written and directed by Jen Krasinski again, uh, who wrote and directed the first one um uh emily blunt is back obviously but it looks like it also has uh killian murphy um it also has that actor noah jupe i believe is how it's pronounced who he was one of the shia labeouf characters in uh honey boy um, oh, okay great actor um yeah so i'm really interested uh I, I haven't really seen much about this but i really enjoyed a quiet place because it was kind of like horror but also not like gore porny and more uh like thriller intense um so i'm curious where it goes because I, I i don't know I, I think i heard or saw that it's supposed to show kind of like how this all started with the beasts but then also be a sequel so yeah, I'm curious where the story goes because if you've seen the first one, um, there's a death that's unexpected at the end that's just like, oh, and then you're gonna do another one. But like the same writer director came back. So clearly uh, he had a story he wanted to still tell. Um, yeah, uh, did you see the first A Quiet Place? I did, yeah, and I really liked it. And I remember when the trailer for this one came out, uh, it looked, like they expanded upon that world for this sequel. So I think that that could be really cool. Um, yeah, for me, a part of it is like, like I, I love horror and I liked the first one a lot, but I also just feel like there's so many movies that are coming out now where it's like, eh, I lost interest. I, you waited way too long. You should have just released it while we were at home because no, I don't care. And for me, that's kind of on there. I'm kind of like, eh, you, you, you should have released it around Halloween when we're all sitting at home. I'm like, mm, whatever, I don't care. That's, yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how it does. Um, but I, I'm... I'm looking forward to it because uh, hopefully it, it, I was very shocked to see the writing directing of John Krasinski. To, so to see him come back. Um, yeah. I'm, and then also what is he going to do next? Cause he doesn't have like a huge like writing directing career. Mm -hmm. um, he's, uh, so yeah. Uh, interested. Uh, what else do you see coming out that you are looking forward to? So my next one is also a horror movie, <laughs> um, and that is The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Uh, that's the subtitle, The Devil Made Me Do It. You gotta um, have a subtitle. <laughs> the, I got one, guys. The Devil Made Me Do e Everyone's It. Everyone's just going to call it Conjuring 3, but you got The Devil Made Me Do It. The Devil Made Me Do It. Um, well, I want to ask for mm -hmm. some of these subtitle uh, things is, who is seeing that it's Conjuring 3 and be like, you know what? I don't know if I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. That will make me do it. I'm in. <laughs> now I'm interested. <laughs> That's intriguing. Mm, what could yeah. that mean? Um, so I actually know exactly what that means <laughs> because uh, I'm a loser and I know a lot about stupid things. Um, so Ed and Lorraine Warren <laughs> were involved in a murder trial where someone killed someone that's all I'll say so i don't spoil any details of the third movie uh so this the third one is based on an actual story uh as they all are but this one was more so uh because there was an actual court case where someone killed someone and said that they were possessed by the devil when it happened and so actually like the real story is super boring it's just that like ed and lorraine were their like character witnesses on a at a trial and we're like we believe them yeah the devil did it um <laughs> this <laughs> this movie is going to take it a step further though and like have them you know i'm sure be with the devil and hang out um, I'm apprehensive. I'm I'm cautiously excited for this movie because uh, I I like the Conjuring movies. They're sort of my like horror guilty pleasure. Like I know they're not like the best horror movies, but they're just kind of like I like them. They're fine. Um, yeah. What concerns me about the Conjuring Three is that James Wan is not coming back to direct it. Um, 
which is like, I don't know, I don't know, man. Um, and the director is the director of The Curse of La Lorena, which uh, was horrible. So I don't know what to expect with that. We'll see. Well, the first um, Conjuring, that's it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I'm excited because I like the movies and this is also billed as their final one. So we'll see. It's a very weird choice out of all like the Ed and Lorraine Warren stories that this is the one they're going to end it on. Um, so I'm guessing, like I said, they're judging it up. Um, but yeah, I think it could be cool. Um, yeah. And that's coming out in early June, maybe. TBD. But it's <laughs> as of now, it's supposed to come out early June. And I'm just really excited for some good horror to come back because um, there has been really good indie horror out there, but I'm ready for like mainstream horror, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to see that one. Um, fair, was the second fair. one even good? I uh, Yeah, the second I, one is good. The second oh, one is okay. good. Yeah, I'd say the second one is um, actually more intense than the first one. Um, so yeah, I think it's good. Man, when did the first one come out? This This is... It's like, been a few years now. I think feel like we were in college because like it's been a while. It's been a while. And I I do I also feel like the insidious movies get conflated with the conjuring because Patrick Wilson is in both. Um, so I also do need to take sometimes a minute and be like, what happened in one movie? But yeah, the conjuring's <laughs> been around for a minute, and then they had all sorts of spin-offs to like Annabelle and Annabelle comes home. And honestly, like they're consistently pretty good. Uh the Annabelle movies are actually really terrifying. Um, so hmm. I think that there's potential. I just, I, want, I think they could have gone a little more exciting with the story they chose to focus on in the third, um, <laughs> cause it's really just a court case. So we'll see, we'll see, but I am excited. Maybe, hopefully. Mm. <laughs> nice. Um, one that, uh, is, uh, we were talking about like big budget, uh, mainstream, coming out uh is the suicide squad not to be confused <laughs> with 2016's suicide squad no this is um, the suicide squad <laughs> yeah this is written and directed by james gunn if you're curious who that is he's obviously the guy behind guardians of the galaxy guardians of the galaxy volume two um and there's like some people who came back from the other Suicide Squad, but then there's just an insane new cast of people, just to name some people that are involved in it, like Margot Robbie is back, um, uh, but there's Idris Elba, uh, John Cena, um, Jai Courtney came back, Peter Capaldi, who is one of the recent doctors, um, Michael Rooker, who was also in Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Nathan Fillion, uh, Sylvester Stallone is doing a voice of King Shark, um and then viola davis came back just like what the fuck like it just if you watch the trailer like it looks weird i have not read any suicide squad comic books but i've listened to uh the geek history lesson podcast episode on suicide squad and like kind of learned about their history it's just a weird comic book series that has been like canceled and like just like all over the place over the years um and so I think when Warner Brothers uh, were trying to make DC movies, they I think they literally wanted to make their Guardians uh, because uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was uh, put on Marvel's slate. And I think a lot of people are like, huh, well, that's like a C-list, D-list comic book. Why the fuck are they doing that? Um, and then when they were kind of doing the competing, like here's our slate of movies and here's all the things we're doing. I think they're just like, yeah, we're doing Suicide Squad. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? You know? Like, <laughs> and so the fact that it felt very much like them trying to do that. And now the guy who directed Guardians of the Galaxy was given basically DC's version of the Guardians. Um, yeah, it, it looks fun. Uh, real weird. I don't care if it's connected in any way to any of the other garbage movies in the DC EU or whatever the fuck they're calling it now. Uh, but this one looks fun. This one looks like they actually were like, okay, we brought in James Gunn. Like, please, please do something that will make uh, make us money because we fucked up a lot. <laughs> um, 
So I don't know. Have you seen the trailer for this one? Yeah, I have. Um, I I liked the concept for the first one. I thought the first one could have been really something, and they dropped the ball on it, in my opinion. Um, so I think that this could be good. I'm just like a little hesitant because it's Warner Brothers, and I don't I don't know what to expect. <laughs> Um, I do think that James Gunn is a fun choice to have come in. I do think like he is setting a different tone from Guardians of the Galaxy. I think Suicide Squad is a little more R-rated compared to family-friendly Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Um, so I think it could be really fun and interesting. And I I like Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. I liked Birds of Prey. I think people were way too harsh on it. Um, so, you know, at the very least, I'm excited to see her back as Harley Quinn again. Yeah, definitely. Um, one thing that uh, it's been interesting because uh, we won't go too much into this because like before we started recording, we had like a 30 minute discussion on Warner Brothers and DCEU movies. But like with all the groundswell for like Snyder Cut uh, and like restore the Snyder, you know, whatever. It's almost like David Ayer, who made the original Suicide Squad, tried to get like he, he did some interviews where he basically confessed what fully happened, which for those who don't know, that was coming out uh, August of 2016. What had come out in February 2016 and was a phenomenon was the first Deadpool movie. And so literally what Warner Brothers saw is like, well, they made a rated R movie about a like a dark, weird character. And it, because they made it funny, that's that's why people saw it and it made money so can we do more like that like they literally pointed to deadpool and said can we do more of that and he's like yeah but i've already shot and made like this and like the best way i could explain it it's like it's like he made like this chicken dish you, you know with like veggies and you know a certain sauce and they're like yeah but can you can you make it a, a nugget? Can you do, can you turn it into nuggets? And he's like, yeah, but I don't, I don't have the breading. I'm going to have to like cut it up. And like, what? I don't even have the stuff for that. Like, I, I, you want me to do reshoots? You want me to add scenes to try to add jokes? Like, it's just going to not taste good. <laughs> like you, I have something over here. I, th I have this chicken dish I've been working on that you hired me to do. And now you want me to turn it into nuggets. And um, so like when he said that, it's like, yep, that makes all the sense in the world. They literally saw something mm -hmm. else make money and they're like, can you do that? And yeah, they have a history of doing that. That seems like to be a lot of what they did with, uh, you know, Snyder and then Joss coming in. They're like, we like Avengers money. Can you make us Avengers money? So, you know, I don't even know what their deal is anymore. <laughs> like, I literally don't know. Just I, commit to a person. Yeah, just commit. <laughs> You, it's just, it's, how about oh. this how about this call me crazy mm. um have a good idea first mm -hmm. before you announce slates of movies have a good idea with a writer director that you like what the vision is and you think it'll financially be successful and critically successful people will want to see it and they won't hate you for doing it mm -hmm. then start making the movie and continue doing that and finish the movie then release it how about that Call me crazy, yeah. but it may or may not have worked for other people uh, opposed to being like, yeah, 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 yeah. Can you make one of those? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll start. All right. Uh, yeah, I know you're almost done, but can you change it? <laughs> I mean, straight up, like, I think to like, just have faith in your own characters. Like they just are at this point, it's like soulless carbon copying of other movies uh, that it's like, come on guys like your characters are beloved there's history there if you make good quality um your the built-in fan base will come and then tell other people to go see it too that's that's how marvel worked that's how wonder woman was successful that's how birds of prey was successful it's like come on like ugh. so i don't know i mean i do also part of me wonders too with this new suicide squad if they're kind of like all right well the first one didn't work out but like now we're coming in like ready to copy Deadpool. So like, let's just do it from the beginning. <laughs> now we did it from the beginning. Uh, yeah. And, and we got the guy from Guardians yeah. to do our oh. Guardians. Uh, so I don't know. I just don't know. Cause like I, the trailer looks cool. I like James Gunn. Um, I think he's really fun. 
and but it's also like if Warner Brothers just like let him do his thing it could be good but if they've been following their track record of like oh we want money so can we make that movie instead like I don't know I don't know yeah I there hasn't been like talks (laughs) of like reshoots or like changes so like hopefully like you said hopefully they like followed through but like I just want to go up to these executives and say like all right let's look at Guardians let's look at Deadpool why did these work it's because they had a vision they put a person with that vision and they stuck by it and they you know by being a good movie that worked as advertising for people to tell people like, Hey, let's go see that movie. Hey, I'll go see it again with you. Hey, like, you know, to where I saw Deadpool a couple times in theaters, you know, I'm sure people saw guardians a couple times in theaters and like, that's your advertising is good press. Not yeah. just like, Hey, we did this thing. What do you think? It's like, yeah. well, no one liked it. So therefore they didn't tell their friends to see it. So no one saw it. And that's why your numbers just do this. <laughs> right. You know, and like one last thing I'll say about that is superhero movies in general have been sort of clumped in this idea of like spectacle movies that they're not really movies they're like spectacles. And I think yeah. of anything like DC and Warner Brothers track record has shown that's not the case because they try to just put on a spectacle and it doesn't work because people want to enjoy it and they don't it's like if it's a good quality movie and there's also really cool visuals then more people are like I really liked that let's see that again you should go see this you'll love this but it's like okay well like you guys just did special effects and I hate all your characters. So I <laughs> not watching any more of your movies. It's like, come uh, on, guys, you're working against yourself at this point. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> For sure. What else are you looking forward to? So this is also a Warner Brothers movie, oh, uh, not DC. So I think it'll be totally good. I do have to say, okay, I got to give credit where credit's due. Warner Brothers, for all the shit they're doing with DC, they have really figured out how to distribute movies in COVID times. And I got to give them credit for that. Their business model of releasing movies uh, for a certain amount of time on HBO now, or H- I'm sorry, a certain amount of time on HBO Max, and then also uh, consecutively having it in theaters is genius. And then taking it away after like, I think two weeks off of HBO Max and then still being in theaters or you could pay to rent it later so smart like so smart the way they figured it out because there's so many movies of theirs that i'm gonna watch because i have hbo max like hell yeah (laughs) um and one of those is in the heights i've been so excited for this movie for a very long time it's one of the ones that when they postponed it i was extremely bummed because it looks incredible so in the heights for those of you who might not know is a musical that was written by lin-manuel miranda who also wrote hamilton I think In the Heights is better than Hamilton um, in terms of like the songs and the stories and the feel good. Uh, And I love Hamilton. I think Hamilton's genius. So wait, Um, it was a musical that already came out? It was a Broadway musical. Uh, that oh, was, okay. So, this so it's was, not just a movie musical. Like it was a musical that they're making a movie. Correct. So, and this was, this was his first musical. So this was before Hamilton. Um, and ah. so it's really it's just a really well done story and beautiful song and just vibrant characters and i so i'm really excited for it to come to the screen directed by john m chu who did crazy rich asians and what's really cool about him is if you saw crazy rich asians you saw like this this the big scope that he can do and for a movie like this it needs a big scope uh the trailer looks so so good like the trailers look amazing um i'm so excited for this and uh anthony ramos who was also in hamilton he's the lead and he's really really great uh we also have lin-manuel miranda in a very small role um and jimmy smiths is in it as well and just like a lot of uh lesser known musical actors in it uh corey hawkins who was in the walking dead uh he's singing and dancing it in two um i'm just overall very excited i have been for a while i think that if you like a feel-good story if you like a big uh beautiful musical production definitely see the trailer check it out um it's it's been a while since we've had like a really good 
big scope musical movie. And I think that I'm I'm excited for this because I like just I like the vibe. So I'm very pumped for In the Heights. And that is set to come out on June 18th. Fingers crossed, because it was supposed to come out June of 2020, and I've already waited a year. So like just put uh, it on HBO Max so I can watch it, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, I remember, I think I saw either like a teaser trailer or something for that. Um, and it, it'll be interesting because like, I feel like the musical movie genre is something that we get like maybe one a year, mm -hmm. you know, like, so it's, it's always like, it feels like a toss up whether it actually be like good or it'll be like cats. Right. You know, like <laughs> we get like the musical movie once a year, but like maybe every two years is when it's good or three years. Right. It's not like consistently good. Yeah. And um, yeah, this one just looks incredible. And the source material is already incredible. So I think it could be really, really good. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Fingers crossed. I hope it's not cats. Although I love cats too, just in a very, very different way. <laughs> I'm excited for a trailer that uh, it just dropped. Uh, mm. <laughs> Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Got to get the what's after the colon. Um, or no, there's no colon. Uh, it's just and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Okay. Um, so this is one of the next Marvel Studios movies. Um, the reason I'm excited for this one, um, I, there's like a few different ones that are still scheduled to come out. Um, but like the reason is I know nothing about this comic book character, just like when I was going into Guardians. Um, this uh, is, you know, an Asian cast. Uh, it's, uh, as you can tell from the trailer, it's like very just like fight based and hopefully not just like big CGI ex explosions, uh, but just more of like, it looks like hopefully like a Bruce Lee, you know, Jackie Chan, like karate movie meets like Marvel. Um, so like, I don't know, that trailer just uh, excited me because I'm like, finally, like something different because it feels like it's been a little bit since we had a Marvel movie. And like when we did uh, like, yes, we've had the uh, Disney Plus uh, limited series, uh, which uh, with WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but like those felt very like the Marvel we've seen before. Like Falcon and the Winter Soldier felt like any of the other ones with Captain America movies. Uh, and yeah, so this one just feels different. It looks different. It's with like a bunch of actors that I've never heard of or seen really. So I just really hope it does well because it'll expand uh, beyond just the basic characters that we've seen over and over for years. Yeah, I was very curious about it uh, because like you said, it seems like something different. Um, and then I saw the trailer and how stunning it looks. And it was like, oh, lock it in. Yeah, I'm watching this. <laughs> this looks take my awesome. Money. <laughs> yeah, take my money now. Uh, I'm more excited for this than Black Widow. I'll tell you what. It was like, damn, this looks different. It looks pretty like... I think it looks Black really Widow cool. should have come out just 10 years just, ago and yeah, it wouldn't have been a problem. Oh, guys, that's one. That's one where it's like, y'all waited too long. I don't care anymore. Like, I just am not going to. And I'm not going to, no. you know what? Spoilers. But it's because Black Widow died in Endgame. Right. You know? Well, that like, too. The, yeah. You've already waited like literally a decade since you should have put it out. Died. <laughs> like, just. What the fuck? And then, yeah, just to continuously delay it because of COVID, when you have Disney Plus, like, there were already so many plans of like, okay, we're going to put on Disney Plus for you guys to rent it. And then like, mm, actually, we want to have it in theaters and make money that way too. So it's like, yeah. you know, fuck you guys. I'm not renting that movie. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I know her, how her story ends. And guess what? Black Widow wasn't that good to begin with. So whatever. Um, fuck that movie. <laughs> I think you're a little biased because you don't like Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> there's that. Yeah, there's that. And it, but I <laughs> Come, say, no, that, that's a lot. You don't like Scarlett. I don't. I also think the Black Widow had the unfortunate start during a uh, jazz part of the Avengers. And so she just didn't have a good start in general. Uh. But I like Florence Pugh. And if she's in more Marvel movies, I'm all in on that. I think that's dope. Um, <laughs> so whatever. But yeah, Shang-Chi looks really cool. I'm in. I will watch it. I will rent that. I'll, I'll give money to Disney Plus and rent that from home for sure. 
<laughs> the millionaire over here. Well, give apparently. me the code because I don't want to give them more money. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it, it, it does look, it, it looks good. Um, and, and, and one that like, I'm not going to go super deep on, but like, because we're talking about Marvel, I'm also excited for the next Spider-Man movie, um, because, uh, Homecoming and Far From Home were both awesome. And I'm really curious to know, based on how the last one ended, where the series will go. Um, and also because there's supposed to be a ton of people from like other Spider-Man movies, franchises, like come in. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I hope that is as good as it seems like it can be. Um, but, uh, yeah. And, and man, it just, it feels like it's been so long since we've had like true th theater marvel stuff doesn't it like it just yeah which is crazy because it has been what like how long has it actually been well like, let's see so 2019 years? was Endgame, and then a few months later far from home so i guess so it's been like two years sort of yeah yeah which is interesting but then we're also getting like like what three four new movies to make up for that this year's so <laughs> we're just going to get like inundated with a lot of Marvel. Uh, Cause also if, we're, if we want to stick on the Marvel train, Eternals is coming out this year as well. That's right. Fuck. I was, yeah. With <laughs> uh, directed by Chloe Zhao. Like, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Another insane cast. Like. Yes. And, and it's just very interesting too. Cause it's very under wraps uh, in terms of what exactly it is. Um, I don't know the Eternals. I've only read like the, synopsis for the movie so i'm not 100 percent sure what to expect but after watching nomadland i am very curious to see chloe zhao take on a marvel movie i think it could be really stunning um so i'm very curious about it for sure for sure yeah i'm, I'm interested and i kind of i really like just like with uh shang chi that these are two things that are totally new they're characters we've never seen before and they're properties that we don't really know mm -hmm. um so it's 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 new and i think that's what what's been missing is we had a lot of movies in the marvel universe that was like back to back like another thor another captain america uh this is one where they're all together another this another that like finally we're getting rid of a lot of those original avengers because like contracts ended and like a lot of those actors are moving on or like characters died whatever it may be like endgame was a hopefully like a good like okay done with that now we're doing new stuff um and like we've kind of earned your trust for like however many years uh to do whatever we want and so hopefully that these three uh, these few that we kind of talked about because they're just new will be good and then we can keep just getting new and then they could just be different movies that look good that it's like oh yeah marvel did that you know it's not yeah. so much like Oh, another Marvel movie, you know? Right. I mean, they seem to be taking risks with uh, what they're going, where they're going, um, which I think is really exciting. And I think I just for like Eternals and Shang-Chi, especially, I'm just curious about this, like you said, this brand new stuff that we've never seen. Like, I like this rendition of Spider-Man, but a part of me is like a little less excited for the third one, just because it's like, I, get, I, I know what he's about, what's up? But like, I want to learn the, these new movies. Like, what are all these things going to be? So I'm very curious. I want to check it all out. So completely switching gears and going into indie realm of movies. I am really excited for Zola. Uh, that is coming out June 30th, so not too far away. Um, you guys might remember or not, <laughs> it's bonkers there a few years ago there was this insane twitter thread uh written by this woman named zola and she and her it's crazy like i can't like i can't even fully describe the whole story it was just like if you could see jess twitter. if you're not watching the video version of the podcast just <laughs> Like the hands are up and she's just like, look at just like, it's just not, you I, know. Where like, do I start here? Cause there's so much to unpack. Where do um, I even start? I don't even know how to describe this Twitter thread, except that this woman, um, 
she got, went by Zola on Twitter. She told this insane story about her. She was she's a stripper or she was a stripper. I don't know if she currently is or not. And this one woman she met and they were booked to like do this crazy stripping event in Florida. And then they got roped in with like gangs and, and murder. It's just insane. And it's a true story. And this basically it's... <laughs> It's the Twitter thread starts off. The first tweet is like four pictures of these two girls. And Zola tweeted, y'all want to hear a story about why me and this bitch here fell out? It's kind of a long but full of suspense and then had an emoji. And it was it was like I remember reading it in real time being like, what the fuck? This is crazy. Um, so they have adapted this Twitter thread into a movie called Zola. I'm very excited for it to see this all play out in movie form because it is. So like, I saw the trailer and this is from a Twitter feed. Yes. <laughs> and it really, it really is. The Welcome to 2021. I know it's so wild. So that's another reason why I'm excited for it is that we've never had like a source material be a Twitter thread. Um, that's just like this insane story. Uh, so I'm like so excited to see it translate in film. I think it could be really cool. Um, and we'll we'll see, we'll see. It's It has sort of like this sort of like Spring Breakers, um, Harmony Corinne like vibe to it. Uh, it's directed by... Um, Janixa Bravo. I hope I'm saying that night. She also wrote it as well. And she worked closely with actual Zola to be like, let's hear about it. Like what really went down there. So it's not just the Twitter thread. Um, but it just looks really cool. It looks like this crazy, like, you know, story that's being told in this sort of like stylized way. I think it could be really interesting. Um, some of the cast include Riley Kilo, uh, Coleman Domingo, Nicholas Braun from Succession. We love him. Um, T.S. Madison. It, it just seems like such a wild one. And then Taylor Page is playing Zola and she's sort of like newish. Uh, she's kind of coming up now. So I think it could just be like one of those wacky indie movies that I that's my jam. So I'm excited. I'm excited for Zola. That could get bonkers. Yeah, I did see the trailer for that. And like the fact that it's based off a Twitter feed, it's like that makes so much more sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, wild. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to any movies like that, unfortunately, I have not done as much homework on it. Like I feel like I've seen trailers here and there, but like, I don't know, it's hard. Because when a trailer comes out, I was like, do I want to watch it? Because will this even come out this year? You know, right, like right. that's that's why, like, uh, usually I'm all up on the trailers and like I know what's slated already. But like this year, it's been so uncertain with things that like I'll see a trailer come on like a YouTube feed or something. And I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, like maybe when I know it's like coming out, I will watch the trailer or like read about it. But um, yeah. Yeah, uh, the main thing that I've just noticed when I've kind of like skimmed over the rest of 2021, what could come out is like, we don't have any like big directors, like say like a new Tarantino movie or um, I guess like, yes, like Steven Spielberg is doing uh, West Side Story, but like he has one coming out, like a movie coming out like every other year. So it's like not right, right. shocking. Um so like that's one thing I will say is like usually I'm all up on like like what Jess did is like advertising for new indie movies that people should go see that are hopefully original and low budget and could really use uh, more people to see them. But it's like I just don't know what's coming out because like I haven't been in a theater since like January of 2020. <laughs> so who knows? But like I see things uh, like another uh, Guillermo del Toro movie. Uh, uh, as we said, uh, oh, there is supposed to be a new Edgar Wright movie. Yeah, um, so that's what's so on your note, I just want to say I agree with you that it's really difficult to know what to look forward to because a lot of the movies that we've been talking about, with the exception of Zola, is are these like big budget, like Marvel, like in the heights, like big time movies that have been anticipated. 
and they're even struggling to definitively be like this is when we're coming out so it's like yeah so when the big ones can't figure it out then like the little indie ones aren't gonna risk it yeah for zola specifically that like i said i was so into that twitter thread that like i've been following this movie since they announced like we're gonna make a movie about this i was like hell yeah and that was like three years ago so when they finally were like no we're coming out it's like word but other than that like they're what's interesting too is i think a lot of uh movies and studios are keeping particular movies under wraps because they don't know when it's even going to come out so like yeah, yeah i think the guillermo del toro movie is just called like untitled guillermo del toro project like okay. yeah so there's some of that too like there's supposed to be don't breathe two coming out but it's like nothing is is out about that at all like well that's the other thing is like we've mainly like you said we've talked about it like a lot of franchises coming out but like there's even more like sequel spinoffs like whatever like i saw a trailer the other day for hitman's wife's bodyguard um which is like the hitman's bodyguard that ryan uh reynolds samuel jackson movie like there's a new one coming out um there's like peter rabbit 2 um uh, escape room 2 apparently a cinderella movie uh another hotel transylvania um there's uh guys kissing booth three no i'm just kidding i haven't seen any of the kissing <laughs> oh, booth <shit. laughs> uh, <laughs> hold your fucking horses and take off work um no there's another 007 movie uh there's oh, another yeah. halloween movie there's, i'm excited like, for that halloween kills baby yeah like the next ghostbusters movie oh that's right uh, <laughs> like there's just so much that it's like i i don't believe it anymore until it's actually like the week of and it's like well they haven't pulled it yet you know? right 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 <laughs> and there's so many too like they have to play catch up from missing like a full year so we're just gonna get inundated with a bunch of movies and it's gonna be like uh yeah i guess i'm excited for that like <laughs> sure i guess um yeah but yeah it's like it's hard to get excited for like a typical year we will because we it's still so like fickle we're not totally sure um but we know they're coming out sort of soon you know it's just hopefully we'll see like i don't know yeah. um so it is hard to have like a typical sort of like here's what's to come kind of idea because like we, we don't know maybe i mean a lot <laughs> of these i saw was like tbd though like <laughs> maybe yeah <laughs> so. um but there's other ones, uh, you know, uh, uh, last one I'll say, uh, which is another sequel, uh, The Matrix 4. Oh, that's right. It's supposed to come out at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I really hope it's good. Yeah. Um, because, and and, and I, I think it will be because like, Keanu Reeves has kind of had like this flourishing last handful of years with like the John Wick franchise and like another a lot of movies he's come out where and, and also just like the publicity publicity that he's just apparently the nicest guy in the world. Um, so the fact that also Lana Wachowski, one of the original, you know, writer directors of the Matrix movies, um, they've come back to write it and like Carrie Ann Moss came back, but then there's also um, a bunch of new stars that are are, are gonna be in it like uh, Yaha Abdul-Mateen II. Um, oh, I love him. Yeah, he's which he was- my, Yeah, he's in my next movie I wanna talk about. I like uh, him. Yeah, he was in Watchmen and like Neil Patrick Harris apparently, Jada Pickett Smith <laughs> is coming back. Um, <laughs> what? Neil Patrick no, Harris. just Neil Patrick Harris and the Matrix. I know it's world. random, but like, okay, yeah. Um, hmm. but like, I feel like if Keanu came back, he must have liked what they were doing. I don't think he just came back for like a paycheck, right? Um, because he, like, he the, doesn't need it. Yeah, because like the John Wick movies, like he's made with like such care, and like he's so into like doing his own stunts now um that yeah it just feels like if he were to come back to that franchise after 18 years yeah because mm -hmm. matrix revolutions came out oh three wow um christ uh, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. uh 18 years oh my God. that like it must have been a good idea so i hope so yeah I hope so. Or at least even if the idea is bad, 
I have a feeling the action will be cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's hard. This is a tricky one because, like you said, I the idea of that piano's coming back gives me hope because I think he would do something of quality. But also, the Wachowskis have not had the best track record with movies. Hello, Jupiter Ascending. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, that's one where it's like I want to. I want to see a trailer before I. I know what to expect because yeah. I don't. Like there was once upon a time, there was another timeline, perhaps not the darkest timeline, like what we're in. There was a timeline where Matrix 4 and John Wick Chapter 4 were supposed to come out the same weekend. And oh uh, <laughs> John Wick Chapter 4 got delayed and obviously Matrix 4 got delayed. Um, uh, it's still going to come out in 2021. But like the fact that that almost was going to happen, that it was going to be a Keanu weekend. It was like, I guess you're going to get my money twice. You're you right. Know? <laughs> Double feature. Um yeah, so that's the last one I wanted to talk about because there's just too many that it's up in the air whether they're going to come out to begin with and or like you said with some movies like they haven't released anything yet because like the studios are probably like look we have these other things from 2020 on the back burner we maybe didn't even finish these other ones yet or the marketing materials aren't ready um, so we don't know beyond like maybe like a two sentence description and like maybe like a cast list but like we don't have a trailer we don't have a clip you know nothing yeah because they again they just don't know like it's hard to market for something when you don't know to tell people when to watch it so it's like some of these movies that are coming out like even in a few months like we don't know much about because it's like are they coming out in a few months? It's really strange. My last movie I want to talk about is a movie that I was looking so much forward to last year and I was so bummed that it got pushed back and wasn't released. And that is the remake of Candyman. Um, I, I, think was, I, I was like, when she's talking about all these horror movies, like she better bring up Candyman or <laughs> I'm going to be like, um, Jess, oh my God. is your brand. That, uh. <laughs> that and In the Heights are the two that I've been looking forward to the most. And the two that I was like, genuinely bummed when they got pushed back um the 1990s candy man is so good it's so wild um but it's dated as hell like it definitely could use a makeover uh and the trailer for this looks so good i think it's gonna be really cool tony todd is back for the candy man uh he is the candy man so i'm so excited for that and then as we just mentioned uh yaya abdul mateen the second uh is the lead and he is wonderful he was like we said in Watchmen, he was just in trials of the chicago seven he is like on the come up and i believe too he's going to be an aquaman too so like he's on his way for his career to blow up and i'm so excited because i think this man is wonderful um and i think he's just going to be so good in a horror so i'm excited for that i'm excited for this new spin on such a good story. Um, I think it's going to be so cool. I, it's supposed to come out August 27th. I hope it stays and comes out soon because I really, really want to see it. Um, so yeah, we're also, we're supposed to get some really good horror this year. Um, and I hope we do because it's been lacking in the horror yeah. department, obviously. Uh, I haven't seen any of the previous Candyman movies. Uh, two things I'll say is it's cool because there's actually a Chicago comedian who plays uh, clearly like a character that gets, I think, probably killed at the beginning of the movie because like they showed in the trailer. Um, uh, so the fact that like, it was someone I know who is much older, but they look younger. So they played a high schooler. And I remember being at shows and them being like, the, like I, I can't believe it. I got to be in this movie, you, you know? And then like, that feels like for fucking ever ago. And it's like, yeah, I can finally see it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested because everyone has said how like Candyman is like a good like horror franchise uh, that like sure like you said is a little dated but like now it's obviously going to be updated. Um, <laughs> what I am sad about is that we almost had a Candyman Leprechaun crossover, uh, <laughs> oh <laughs> but I think God. it's I think it's Tony Todd was just like straight up like fucking no like I think he, <laughs> I think he 
openly criticized Leprechaun. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I refuse. Like, I will not let that happen. Good for him. Uh, like, that definitely <laughs> helped the legacy of Candyman, I think. <laughs> Especially when the obvious versus movie is Leprechaun versus Chucky. Like, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we should still make that. I would totally watch that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm excited for Candyman. That that trailer looked freaky, yes. and it looked like um, one thing that uh, I, we've talked about a lot before in the podcast is like Jess is obviously a huge horror fan. I used to say I straight up hate horror, but it's because I was always shown bad horror movies. And once I started showing good ones and then like the last handful of years where like people have made good movies that happen to be horror, I think too often people are like, I'm making a horror movie. See, jump scares, da 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 da. It's yeah. all obvious. Characters are dumb. Writing is bad. It doesn't matter. It's a horror movie. Like they, there's no heart and soul into it but like movies uh like what jordan peele uh made with uh you know get out and us and even like a quiet place you know it's like people making these movies with more care and coming up with a good story or an original idea and actually putting thought into it and actually trying uh to make a good movie that happens to be horror they're not mm -hmm. just being like see it's a it's a horror movie <laughs> Right. And I think Candyman back in the day was that and was this horror movie with a deeper meaning. Um, but because it's dated, it kind of got lost in the mix of that. And so I think bringing it to nowadays is going to be really good. I'm so excited for it. Um, so yeah, I hope it comes out in August because I've been waiting a while. Like I've really been waiting. Um, <laughs> Definitely. So what are some movies that you guys are excited for that are supposed to come out in 2021? What are ones that we didn't talk about? Um, maybe tell us about some ones that you did see that have come out so far. Um, yeah, I, I'm i hoping that this summer or the fall, like I'll feel, uh, you know, comfortable enough to go back to theaters because it's, you know, been the long, uh, the last movie I saw in theaters was I saw Knives Out for the second time. Uh, wow. and like now yeah. <laughs> that feels like so long ago um yeah so jess where can they find you on the social medias on twitter and instagram i am at jess quaz j-e-s-s-k-w-a-z-z -Z, jess quaz and you can find me on second chance movies podcast wherever you're listening to this if you're watching this on youtube you can check us out there as well um, I'd love for you guys to go over there and let me know what you think about the discussions we have over there as well. Um, so yeah, that's where I can be found. <laughs> yeah, and you can find me uh, <laughs> at Brandon Prosec on uh, Instagram and Twitter. And please, as always, uh, like all podcasts ask you to do, whatever device or app or system you are listening to this on, subscribe, check out more episodes, share, let friends know about it if you enjoy our chats. Um, we're coming up on 100 episodes. It's crazy. Um, we've been doing this for a while. You know, um, I'll just say before we get to the 100th episode you know we're not like some podcasts who you know we don't have some that come out every week but you know we always try to have fun and, and bring topics that whether you're a movie nerd or just someone sitting with like a group of friends like chatting about movies or tv or pop culture that like these are conversations that you guys would have and yeah i'm i'm excited to do even more with you Yes. Yeah. hundred, hundred, almost a hundred down and a hundred more to go. Maybe probably. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? For sure. When they're doing Candyman seven. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> um, or a reboot of conjuring at that point. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, please check us out on all those places. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time for episode 100.